Hey, I'm your host, Wes. And I'm your host, Scott. Come on in and grab a seat. Because you're hanging with us at the barbershop. Well, uh, having the, the upgraded RAM that allows us to run maybe more stuff uh, at a considerably smoother rate. <laughs> yeah, and now it's the thing. Do I look at you when I'm talking to you, or do I look at you on the screen? Well, see, I don't know. Like we're we're taking a stab into video here. Yeah. So, I mean, for those of you who are not consuming this on the YouTube channel, why are you not on the YouTube channel? <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's exciting but, uh, things happening, yeah, and yeah, we yeah. look like goofballs. <laughs> our first stab at video was on our uh, one of our sister shows, where I attempted to host a Skype meeting with my. Uh, with the old laptop, which, you know, horrible, horrible camera uh, compared to what uh, we're using now. Right. I feel like this is a much better. Uh, much better. Because you got video, you did Skype, but with video or no video? We, yeah, we did the... it with, we did full video on that one. Um, and the interviewee was in North Carolina. So, I mean, you have all of those like, hey, we're not in the same country. Fortunately, we're in the same time zone. So that that worked in our favor, but. All of the latency issues from, you know, international kind of beaming signals around the world. So yeah. on one hand, it's frustrating that you have some of those uh, latency issues and some of the audio quality issues. But on the other hand, isn't it amazing that we can talk to anyone in the world at virtually at any time we want to? It, well, right. Compared to, right. You used to wait, A, for it to be cheap to call. Yeah. And then you had to worry about the time change and if they were home, like now it doesn't matter. Right. It's like you know what right else doesn't gym. matter? It doesn't matter that we're having this whole conversation because I didn't hit the record button on oh, uh, nice. Zoom. So maybe we should do that. Okay. Now. Okay. All right. Here we go. Oh, we want to record the audio. Do you want to include the audio in the recording? Sure. Why not? Right. Yeah. Why not? Computer audio. We've already done that. So now that should be good. <laughs> hey, I feel like a complete tool once again. <laughs> well, it's like it's fine. It doesn't light up, right? The it's learning not curve. like there's an on air button. No. Oh gosh. <sighs> but well, uh, here we yeah. are. <laughs> you know what'll be interesting is if the um the 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 wobble in the table comes out on the video because I feel like the screen's got a bit of a. Oh, you know what? It's probably me. The way I'm oh, leaning on it too, right? Know, I'm a huge yeah. leaner, and every time you touch it, well, it's like, know. oh, is it? Are we gonna look like walking bobbleheads? I don't know about you, but uh, this is a glorious bobblehead right here. Look at this. Right, but <laughs> no, uh, no inklings to cut it yet. I've gone back and forth on that a few times. Uh, Still no trim. He, Kim does the dead ends for me, and I, I will probably do for another right go round of that. But I mean, this is like this is filling out much nicer than oh, I could ever have. What's the passcode? What is the passcode? Well, I'm not entirely sure. So why don't we? Uh, Let's try something here. Let's try to do an invite. So let's invite somebody. And do we have a, uh, oh my Lord. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna copy the invite link. What are you talking to him in? Um, messenger. Messenger, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, we're gonna do all kinds of stuff. So look at look at us go here. You're in uh, Facebook Messenger? Yeah. Okay, Facebook Messenger it is. Oh, move this over here. Let's go. Me. Actually, let's not do that. Let's go. Uh, no, nope, let's go me because I don't know our other thing off the top of my head. Can I borrow that for a second? Of course. Sure. Look at us go. Professional. <laughs> we are so on the ball here. Let's go. Oh. Uh, this. Oh, my God. Cable management. Oh, not there. so good. Do my big slurp off air. Let's see what happens here. Dee -dee 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 -dee. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go new message. No, I am going to do it if it ever decides to open. As we're singing the virtues of this uh, new computer. <laughs> no, it works awesome. So It's uh, new computers. It's old fingers. So is that an M with an I or an M with a Y? Um, it's M-I. M-I. L-E-S. L-E-S. And with a G, correct? Yeah. G-I-B. G-I-B. There, there, there he is. So here we go. So now here's what's going to happen. We're going to go, bang, we're going to paste in the link. And now that should 
effectively allow him to <laughs> bounce in here. So, and that came from what you? That comes from me. So, okay. I mean, he's going to have to go to his requests and uh, don't think I'm a weirdo. <laughs> uh. All right. So now, if all of this works out correctly, and I'm not going to get rid of that. I'm just going to minimize this for a minute so we can. Uh, oh, wow. It's over here now. All right. There we go. So conceivably, I should be able to dump this. And uh, maybe I should keep that open just in case. Just in case. There's a whole lot of waiting going on. <laughs> oh, it's okay, though. I was thinking about this uh, today as we were coming down. Um, we actually know another person who used to work in radio. And uh, was that be? Uh, do we know Mr. Elman enough to say we know him? Uh, you know what? I I I could. Well, right, I spent you, enough time you, around there as a you kid. Lived that, in their house. Well, there is that. Um, it was long after Dave had gone, but I was actually thinking uh, one of my high school contemporaries was a radio guy for a short period of time until he got. Uh, he got replaced by a computer. Oh, we got something going on. And who's that? That's a Bill Ingram. Hello. Hello. Jesus. Hey, Miles. Can you hear us? Oh, boy. <laughs> we're right into where we were before. Right. Oh, this is horrible. Why are we having these issues? You think we'd have had this all sorted out before we got to this point? I know. Uh, and yet we haven't. And I don't understand why. Test, test, test. Test, test, test. Yeah, so on our end, we are we are connected. I'm not sure why. Hello. Oh, hi. Hey. <laughs> What's up? Not too much, man. We're okay, like, I don't feel so like, We're now. like, oh my gosh, we don't know what we're doing. We're a bunch of goose. But maybe it was on your <laughs> end. Sorry about that. Yeah, the, oh, sound, the professional I sound engineer. I don't know if I, uh, I don't know what light, like I don't have very good light right here, but. Ah, uh, it's okay. Try. You're a little, you're a little washed out from the ba from the backlighting, but that's okay. Yeah. Well, I, I can just. Uh, oh, that's there. great. Yeah, that's perfect. See who All you right. are. Cool. Cool. Well. So yeah, cool. What do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> uh, you know what? I think we talked about uh, like way back. If you wanted to talk about being like a hometown boy. Uh, you know, and your adventures in Buckhorn and then whether, you know, I got a few questions sort of like that. And as I say, we're happy to kind of delve off of, you know, ask a question. And then if you got a funny story, we're happy with that. And then, you know, if there's something else I love, like if you get a tangent, like way out, I'm totally cool with that. Cause then if it swings back to the question, it's like, ah, oh, fucking mint. <laughs> okay. As a, well, we can can we swear? Oh, please we do. Are, we are absolutely adult-oriented and adult-themed, so uh, there is full disclaimers at the front end of all of our shows. Let's be honest. I'm <laughs> drinking at noon, so okay. 12, 13, and I've cracked my beer, so I'm good. Right. I was just about to, uh, to I was just about to say to Scott that we actually know some other people in radio, and, and knowing what they went through, I have some questions for you. First of all, how many radio stations right. have you been at? Uh, well, I'm on three currently, um, but I, I, before I was locally on the radio, I was in Toronto on the Canadian Traffic Network. Right. That was very brief. That was my first real job after college for, for broadcasting, and uh, I, my dog's barking. Oh, that's okay. Uh, but uh, I got fired. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Was it so, one of those, yeah, like, was, was, did you see it coming? Oh yeah, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I uh, was alone. Uh, my first weekend alone, I like I just screwed up so bad. I got in there late, like like late, like um, after like rush hour before before I had to crack the mic, you know. And oh uh, wow! So um, from then on, in that whole shift was just like that was the beginning of the end. Like I knew the the boss came back. She's like, "What happened on that weekend?" I'm like, "I don't know." <laughs> now, now right it up. Yeah, yeah you're that generation you would have went to college right out of high school so you were what like 18 no actually i uh i was 38 in july 
and I, uh, I, I didn't go back to college until I was about 25. So you had a good long I went to Fleming when I was, I went to Fleming when I was 18 for business and I failed. I failed there too. <laughs> Solidarity brother. Solidarity. Uh, Nothing yeah. wrong with that. And then you went to, I want to, it's not Conestoga. Where'd I went to Loyalist. Loyalist, Loyalist. for radio. In so, Belleville. Well, I went for TV radio. I, I did my internship at uh, at Chex TV, which was a lot of fun. TV is a lot more work, though. So, I. Um, well, if it's anything like making the, radio. if it's anything like making the leap from audio podcasting to video podcasting, I think I can appreciate that with on the tiniest of slivers because <laughs> this is like what the hell. TV TV news is is a lot more. It's a lot. Of, it's like way more pressure. Like you have to have. Your story done by six, like before six PM. You know right. what I mean for the six o'clock news. So it's it's very crunched. Well, very much, and I mean, right, your partner in crime, you know, Mike comes from Mike. that, so he's feeling way better yeah. on radio, does he? Well, we can just be you. Like, yeah. Well, we don't have to like get dressed up. You know. You know, just wear whatever you want. To, well, not whatever you want, but you know. Woo, pantsless Wednesdays. Wear a suit, <laughs> yeah, right. right yeah. Pantsless Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we we're when the pandemic began because our building, like a lot of people, are in the building. Right. Just, like me and Mike and our boss. So like every Friday for like the first like little bit, we were like wearing you know a jersey or like we we did wear a suit one one time on a Friday. But like right now, I got the Gordon Bombay Hawks jersey on from. Uh, Mighty Ducks. Nice. Nice. Mighty Ducks one. Have you so, uh shout out to the Mighty Ducks. Have you watched <laughs> the new one yet? I watched the first episode. I'm a big Ducks guy, yeah. man. Like I, I can quote the whole trilogy. And then I like it. I like the new Duck show, but um the, I've only watched one episode, right. so I can't really say. I feel like yet. it's going in a different direction. I too have put one episode in and that's about it. And that's on Disney yeah. Plus? Uh yeah. Is it? Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to check that one out. So yeah. it, it's a well, throwback. The ducks, like, the ducks are like good, right? Yeah. Like that's what I got. And now it's like the the underdog team is not the ducks. The like the ducks right. are like the bad the, the hawks. Oh know? wow, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Anyway. What are you drinking there? I am drinking a uh, farmhouse saison from Fenland Falls Brewery. Oh, cool. so uh, we've talked about that. Uh, it's funny. I got that um, last summer. Well, probably two summers ago because I didn't do a lot of drinking last summer, and uh, took it to a barbecue and drank it out of the cooler. It was not my favorite beer. And then uh, yeah. my wife had gotten me their beer box for Christmas, so I'm getting. A box of beer from them every month, and it's funny. I'm not drinking near. I'm not drinking near enough of it because the the beer fridge is getting full. She now you're stockpiling. Like, yeah, she's like, man, there's a lot of beer in that fridge. I'm like, do I need to like drink one after work every day? And she's like, I don't know if I want you to get into that habit. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. this is this is actually grown on me. Like out of the fridge, super cold. It is. It's good. It's a little heavier. I think they do it with um, a yeast instead of a barley. I'm not truly an educated beer drinker, but uh, no, but we like, fake it a lot. It's got a bit of a different taste, and it's yeah, it's something different, right? And um, it's my hometown brewery, I guess, if you think about it. Uh, even though I've probably lived in Bob Cajun longer than I did in Fenland, it's still that hometown feel, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, man. I uh, I drank uh, eight Tall Boys on Saturday and a bottle of wine by myself. I was feeling pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a good night. Um, well, I just had a hanker in, you know. I uh, I wanted I wanted to drink some beers and can't really hang out with anybody. So. Isn't that the worst though? Like, and I I empathize with you because I mean I am a social drinker. I mean I I have a background prior to uh, my last career was in the military. So I mean you can imagine the the culture around drinking that still exists within the military. So oh, yeah. uh, I certainly, my alcohol consumption kind of nosedived after I got out. And then I reconnected with this guy <laughs> and suddenly it shot way back up. <laughs> I like, well, I mean, yeah. that's the thing, right? As, as, at a social gathering, to me, it's it's the lubricant to a good time. Yeah. Um, 
it's true, man. You know what? You, it, it, it's like I've known my buddies uh, that I hang out with still that, you know, I've known them my whole life. And it's like when we hang out, we're drinking. We're not just sitting around. You know what I mean? Like Chat. we're having beers and stuff like that. And, yeah. Uh, it's fun, you know. I don't know. I and to me too, it's 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 unleashing that inability or that inability not to make fun of somebody because it's socially unacceptable. But as soon as you're a little drunk and they're a little drunk, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I like making fun of people. I, I like laughing. It's right. I believe it's, the term is it reduces inhibitions. Inhibitions. <laughs> Thank you. But. I, uh, uh, I, I like, yeah, I, I feel you, man. I like, I, at work, like we're always making fun of each other, like nonstop. Like yeah. it's just pure chirping the whole time. And it's then, like, if you work in a shop or anything, you're always just making fun of each other. It's fun. It, it's your it's thing, fun, right? I, I imagine you'd nature. think, you'd think somebody was upset with you if you went in there and, you know, Mike's like, hey, Miles. You're like, did I do something wrong? It's like, yeah, yeah. It's and I think that's too. Definitely, I think your uh, your audience is is in on it. They're in on the joke, right? Because I mean, even yeah, yeah. when you guys kind of read back your Facebook posts on questions, and I mean, some of those answers are ridiculous. Yeah, but I mean, I think yeah, that totally. that that's that's the way the show goes, right? It's it, it, you're looking for that um, that silliness or well, that ridiculousness. Yeah, for sure. Well, we're 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 trying to be ourselves as much as we can, that as much as we can get away with, um, because you can't totally be your full self, right? You know what I mean. There, there's a persona <laughs> so, to be there. Well, I mean, let's but, be. To me, you, I, I, you know, from the gym and stuff, like you've seen me. That's. Well, that's you, you. Me at the gym is, is me yeah, yeah totally. exactly and it's like it's so funny because it's like right you're you're on the the number one country station in you know plaidville and i mean right that's to to me i mean as much as <laughs> and i don't know what the the numbers would state but to me growing up here and going to school in fenland and high school in fenland I mean, that was 90% of the radios were tuned into whatever assemblance, whether it was Country 105 or now that it's pure and, yeah, pure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so, hard. Um, it's still, yeah, we're, we, like, our our station is definitely, like, number one in the market. Our show, for sure, is number one in the market. So, um we're happy with that. Yeah. It goes up. It, it it fluctuates, but it's it's been for the morning show numbers. It's been going up steady every year since me and Mike have been together. So. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and, and it's funny too because I would tell you no one else is is has got that charisma in the morning yet. And I mean, I, I try to switch out, and I mean, I'm more of a new rock guy. So, but I mean, whether you're listening out of Toronto, and then as I say, there is that nuance that Peterborough is the armpit of the world, and as soon as you start to crest in. Every other radio station craps out, so you're picking a a Peterborough station to to do. And right, you're not. Um, what is it when somebody else does it and it's on a whole bunch of other radios? Syndicated. Syndicated. You're not syndicated. a syndicated show, right? Because that's no, the other one. Like no. Freak is doing a syndicated show, right? So yeah. that guy's not even local. Which I think, right? In in the mornings, I tune in. That was the other day. We. I, I managed to send you a message that I just thought the bit you were doing was hilarious. And you actually replied back. And I'm like, ah, oh, you see this, you would never get that. Out of a syndicated outside radio of something show. else. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, you know, local morning radio shows are still, I, they still have a place, you know, for they, they're, it's, it gets a lot of information out to the community that's local. Like whether it be, you know, some kind of fundraiser or something like that, like, and people will be like, oh, I know that person at that fundraiser. You know what I mean? I'm going to go to that or whatever. I mean, so, Scott, you can it, you can probably remember, you know, in when, when we were young men, teenagers, and the local radio station was CKLY out right? of Lindsay, AM uh, radio, uh, before they made the leap over to FM Bob. Well, you, right? knew, you knew you lived rurally when they were reading the farm report and the obituaries. We, we had to listen to the farm report every day because yeah. my mom wanted to hear the obituaries right <laughs> after. So you you pretty much had a good idea what pork bellies was every yeah. day. But, <laughs> That's uh, funny, man. Um, 
But I do the news on Bob now, and you know, farming farming news is important. So if I see something that's pertinent to farming, right. I'll write it up and, and throw it in there for sure. I mean, that's that's yeah. your audience, right? So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like that's my brother in law. He just you know, oh, I just sold seven uh, seven calves and made enough money, yeah. and I'm gonna go buy it. I'm going to buy seven more cows that got calves in them. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is my Friday night conversation, yeah. right? That his father-in-law is at the Woodville cell barn looking at heifers. And I'm like, Jesus, this is exciting stuff. Yeah. And it's like, but oh, I mean, man. it's how I've it goes. Had, uh, I've had to host like uh, 105 dances in Woodville. Oh, boy. And those those things. Are, yeah. By the end of the night, man, like it's you want to get out of there quickly. Well, I, I laugh because uh, you, you talk about this. My daughter's starting to hang out with uh, Woodville boys. And it's mm-hmm. like, right? Because it's the, yeah. you know, she has friends at Fenlon and Fenlon's a feeder school. So that's where Woodville yeah. kids go to high school. And yeah, I like, yeah. and I, you kind of think about it. I'm like, I don't know if I want you hanging out with farmers. Oh, man. It's the same when I went to Lakefield, when Lakefield was a high school. It was like, you know, you had the Buckhorn boys, like our group, Apsley boys, Warsaw boys, Duro boys, right? you know, and, uh, and Lakefield boys. So like, yeah, there's, I, I totally get that feeder system school. Are they, dur- know, are they, cool. are they Duro people or are they dumber people? <laughs> <laughs> are we allowed to say that? <laughs> uh, I got some, I got some Duro buddies for sure. Um, but yeah, I, I can say that they're dumber to their face. Nice. Because <laughs> sometimes it's just true. So th- that's what we want to sort of talk about today was um, being a hometown boy, right? So you did not yeah. go far away. Uh, born and raised in Buckhorn, right? Well, I was born in uh, Huntsville. And uh, I, I, I think my family moved to, um, we lived in Whitby briefly like when I was real little. And then I think I was like four, around four years old, five years old, moved to Buckhorn. So then ever since then. Right. Well, well, right. You don't have a whole lot of memories. At least I don't. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Some people were like, yeah, I remember when I was two and I'm like, do you really, (laughs) or did you just see a picture and that's the pictures and ingrained into your head right? i went to but, college with a girl who said she had memories of being in the womb and i kind of went i'm not going to sit beside you anymore uh, <laughs> did she ask you what your sign was and all that stuff too it was a, no she didn't it was a weird so i i took a general arts and science because i was trying to get into healthcare at the time and uh nursing was full and paramedicine was full and it's like well there's this general arts and science which is all sort of like hard sciences for for prep and you had certain number of electives in that that program. And so the elective I took, I was going to go into funeral service actually at one point. So I thought, you know, what a, a cool elective was this comparative religion course, because that comes up a lot in sort of funeral traditions. So in this comparative religion course, and you got to imagine like the the cast of characters in that room, uh, including, the, so like I say, the girl beside me who had the memories of being in the womb, I was like, what's your program? And she's like, I'm in the jewelry program. I'm like, yeah, of course you are. <laughs> Yeah, totally. Yeah. So yeah, I can see that. Now, would you have classified yourself as a town kid, or were you like getting bust into town? Uh, I used to hitchhike a lot. Um, <laughs> I would hitchhike into town. Nice. Or I'd, I'd hitchhike to school if I missed the bus. Like, right. I had regular people that I'd, from my neighborhood that would see me hitchhiking, and they'd pick me up um but yeah like once i started getting in my older teens like 18 19 like 20 i i'd be in town peterborough quite a bit right partying and stuff right it's so. funny i'll uh my dad's got a hitchhiking story so he oh, went yeah. to uh, ryerson lived in pembroke and if he couldn't afford the bus home he'd hitchhike and one day he's on that big hill i guess it's not even a big hill out of barry's bay anymore and what are we talking 62 sure before i was born mm-hmm. and he's on the long walk up the hill and this caddy pulls over and he does the hitchhiker jog up and the guy the power window goes down and my dad gets up hand on the on the handle to open the door and he kind of looks in and the guy is stark naked <laughs> and my dad's oh like my i beg your pardon <laughs> he's like oh man i'm just testing out the air conditioning and my dad's like, uh, I think I'll walk. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, man, that I haven't had anything crazy like that happen. <laughs> but like up in 
up in Barry's Bay, like you're surrounded by the woods too. You know you're what I mean? so you're like, one step away from deliverance. Yeah. Yeah, you're exactly. talking like the uh, you know Barry's Bay is only uh, an hour outside of Petawawa. I mean, I spent like eight years there. So you're talking you're on the on the corner of Algonquin Park. Yeah. 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 That's, that's how people disappear. Yeah, oh yeah, easily. Yeah. <laughs> well that's crazy man no i haven't had anything like that nothing like well to me. lucky you <laughs> i'm just imagining no. let's just clarify this we're talking your high school aged while you're hitchhiking to school correct yeah because i'm yeah. trying to I picture have... what does a 10 year old look like thumbing down the road <laughs> yeah i wouldn't allow that at ever um my dad always just used to tell me though he's just like if i had to call for a ride he's just like you got your thumb he's like put it out there get home like interesting stop sorry about that somebody's getting murdered right now <laughs> how how goes the uh how long have you had the second dog now uh lucy just I think just over a month right and chandler's okay with her oh yeah they're yeah. best friends man oh, good. Each other. it's great yeah, yeah. so we love having dogs so, Miles, I have it on pretty good authority that uh, people in radio uh, get some pretty weird goings on happening in the booth, and uh, particularly when it comes to uh, call-ins. So I'm going to ask you, what is the most bizarre call-in you've ever taken? Um, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Nothing overly too crazy. Like, I've had one guy... One summer left a voicemail saying he, he was a farmer. Sure. And he kept, kept saying a chance of showers every day. And it didn't <laughs> rain. And he's like, he keeps saying chance of showers, chance of showers. He's like, who is the boss over there? Like, you're never getting it right. <laughs> and so I just went on air and I just said, yo, we, we get our, we get our uh, forecast from Environment, Environment Canada. Canada. So yeah. Take it up with them. Yeah. Here's, like the, you here's were, their phone number. Like you were somehow personally yeah, responsible yeah. for the weather. Oh, it's crazy like that. Um, but um, well, one guy called in for a show from Co Hill, and uh, he it was just like exactly what you think somebody from Co Hill would sound like. <laughs> Good old Co Hill. <laughs> <laughs> we love him though. We hope he calls in again. Right. Yeah. Um, so nothing overly, nothing overly too crazy. Now I haven't. So I no, off the top of my head. no crazy. Really sticks it. So that's actually pretty tame because uh, our other radio friend, who hopefully we'll get him on the show at some point, um, worked for a uh, a very large rock and roll station uh, in Central Ontario, and he used to he used to work the night show before nights became uh, computerized. Stop. Sorry about that. No, no worries. So they would actually, and this is this was the joke, was whoever ran the night show would, would run the reel-to-reel, -reel and they would record all the calls, especially the good ones, and they would leave them for the morning guys to listen to as a, you know, hey, good morning, guys, this is what I took last night, and then the morning oh, guys yeah. would erase the tapes. And so I can remember um, calling in, because this is what, you know, when you have friends in radio, you kind of have that, it's a gateway in. And so we would tie up the request line because we'd be shooting the shit for hours and basically programming the show and nobody was getting through and he would just randomly throw it. And this one goes out to Julie, you know, no idea who Julie is, but he would play me these reel to reels over the phone and they were getting like sexually propositioned over the phone. Like, you've got an amazing voice. What time do you get off? Are you going to come over and get me off? And I, like yeah. you, stories that you would never believe if there was not this recorded evidence of these actual phone calls. And, and uh, I don't want to take the story too far, but at one point he's like, do you want to take a call? And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, you just uh, answer the phone and uh, pretend you're me. So we did. <laughs> <laughs> did it work out? It did. Like it was a completely innocuous call and, you know, we just took the request and like, okay, well, we'll get that on the air for you. But it was, uh, I could not believe that now I do, but it was just this overwhelmingly shocking thing to hear that like this kind of stuff happens in radio. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, real to real, like we don't have that anymore. It's all computer and stuff. Yeah, of course. I do. I do know older radio guys that have had that exact thing happen. <laughs> so. Okay. So maybe it's more common than I was yeah. led to believe. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah. So. So you're, but yeah, it's, uh, sorry, what? Oh, no worries. I was just going to go on. So your family's still in Buckhorn? 
Uh, and my mom is, uh, my dad lives in Halliburton. Um, my sister lives in Peterborough. My, I have a brother who lives in Calgary and another brother who lives in Belleville. Oh, everybody's all over. All over. That's cool. Yeah. So, so you obviously get back to see mom every once in a while. Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. Cause all, all my best buddies still live in Buckhorn. Like my, my closest buddies. So like, and my mom literally lives across the lawn from one of my best buddies. So if I go out there for a night of drinking, it's just like, I can just walk across the lawn home to my mom's. Perfect. And, just, and sleep there. And so. she still lets <laughs> you in. So yeah. if you're having a conversation like, like this and we were saying, oh, where are you from? Are you from Peterborough or are you from Buckhorn? I'm from Buck, from Buckhorn, baby. 100% right. all day. Buckhorn for life. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what, right? We've said that, like, right? We, you know, as you become an adult and you live where you live, it soon gets to be like, right? I moved to Bob Cajun when I was 20. So right at 46, I've been here longer than I ever was in my childhood home. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I'd still like to say that, you know, I grew up in my hometown is Fenland Falls. Then yeah. I'm not, yeah, where are you from? And I mean, if we go on vacation and somebody says, where are you from? Well, we're from Bob Cajun. And then they go, well, oh, the hip song. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. If they even know what yeah. that is. Yeah. But uh, it's, no, it's yeah. Well, like, I don't know, man. It's, I don't know. Because you have a lot of memories from where you grow up from, right? So, oh, I don't know. It's just right. Your first, you. yeah, your first friends, your first, right, your first memories, your first time you got in real bad fucking trouble. It's all yeah. right. It's all there. Oh yeah. I remember yeah. falling into the creek in Fanlin and going home, and my snowsuit was freaking soaking wet, and I was my teeth were chattering. I went in the back door of the hardware store, went to my mom, told her what happened. I'm like, don't tell dad. <laughs> <laughs> just don't tell dad because right falling into the creek was bad enough i didn't want to fall in the creek and then get yelled at funny that creek's all so, burned off now <laughs> you guys are in bob cajun right now yeah we yeah. are right now yep so it's that's uh i like the looks of your your setup there where, where are you so uh we actually have a dedicated recording space uh my other thing is i, I have a small retail business i work in uh like adult <laughs> Don't take this the wrong way. I work in adult collectibles, which does not mean sex toys. It means action figures and board games and that kind of stuff. Right? I totally thought that's oh, where you were going. Sweet. Yeah. Do you, so, do you have any uh, Freddy Krueger? Uh, so right now I do not, but I've got some Jason Voorhees. I've got some Scream, uh, some uh, Halloween. What do you got for Jason? Uh, as I'm looking at the shelf right now, I have at least uh, two, possibly three, uh, seven inch. Uh, NECA Jason. So I'm looking at Friday the 13th. So it looks that's like, the video game Jason? I don't do any. I tried to stay away from the video game Deco, but uh, the the movie, the seven inch movie figures from NECA, we do a lot of that. So for any of our oh, listeners okay. that didn't know, yeah. there's two things about Miles you need to know. Loves horror movies nice. on VHS. Oh, sweet. Yeah. And a uh, big hip hop fan. So you oh, you would probably appreciate these figures because in in the NECA branding the the packaging is reminiscent of the VHS cover or the the movie poster. I'll send you some posts and some yeah, pictures yeah. there, Miles. Afterwards, check out what we do. Okay, hey, I would like to go in and check that out. We're not too far down. Yeah, we're not too far away. So anytime you're in town, let me know and we can uh, work something out for you to come in and have a look. Okay, sweet. So yeah, because. Um, I just moved in with my girlfriend not too long ago, and so I'm living in cabin now, and I had to move all my tapes. Oh, over. right, right. And I got, I got hundreds of them. Is so, she? Does she share the passion with you? She gets it. Okay, that's good. She, she, it's it's a nostalgia factor. I've had people come over to my old place and they see like my tapes or whatever, and they're like, "Oh my god, VHS!" You know, and I have an old Nintendo and stuff, and. And then it's like, I remember when I, you know, my family rented a VCR yeah. and, a and it just took them right back, man. And that's yeah. like, well, that's we're, part of it. It's like the we're, nostalgia factor. We are all about the nostalgia here. And that's part of the vibe. Uh, pre, Pre-coronavirus, pre uh, like uh, about 50% of my space is dedicated to retail. And then I have a section behind us. You probably can't see it very well, but there's a small lounge area with like a sofa and chair. And we actually have a couple of retro uh, mini consoles there so people c can come in and actually uh, do some console gaming and that kind of stuff as well but who knows if we're yeah. ever going to get back to that i mean with the uh, the impact on the world but 
So yeah, our yeah. our um our recording setup is actually uh set up on my gaming tables because I don't do board gaming right now with coronavirus. So right, we're yeah. doing all right. So yeah, we're we're pretty happy to have a designated space to go, and the sound has ended up being um pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty mm-hmm. good. Um, so which has been. I think it's been the shocking thing right from the get go that when you listen back, <laughs> you need as, to say it because you 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 are way more enthusiastic about it than I am. But. I am. I, I I don't think I deserve to sound this good at all for the way I <laughs> think I sound in my head. And every time I listen to an episode, I'm like, man, I sound okay. So I should yeah. I should just throw the caveat out there that we are just we are uh, a 33 and a third percent of of uh, of the team here. There is actually a third a third partner here in the whole business and he does all of our uh, editing and production work post production so um you know Andy Andrew Daw is our third and without him we would not sound nearly as uh, as good as we do so thanks to well, him well looks like you have looks like you have some good mics there and stuff and a nice board so we've sl- slowly been like updating yeah the board's entry level um you know our our we have four we have a four mic setup so mics uh, 3 and 4 are you know kind of entry level stuff, and then um, we upgraded. I upgraded to this uh, Shure microphone back at Christmas, and then Scott, you just upgraded yours very recently. Yeah, like a month ago. Yeah, so I love them. I I think they're. If I had known the difference between a a condenser microphone and a dynamic microphone out the gate, I never would have bought a condenser microphone. <laughs> Right. Yeah. yeah. They, they taught us about microphones in college, but I don't really remember anything about them except for like omnidirectional and monodirectional. Or something yeah, like yeah. I don't know. We just, I just know. You just talk into it every day, and I know. I just talk into it. <laughs> At the end of the day, right? Once you're working for somebody and they're supplying the equipment, they should sure as shit know what to give you. They right? should know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. I, I here's the thing how I know that they're good microphones is because I've seen them in movies and other places. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, you now you guys don't I've seen a few pictures of the studio, but you guys don't even have like you don't have a pop filter in front of it or or anything like that, right? And yeah, they're not yeah. they're they're up from the, the the table, not down. They're not hanging, right? They just come up from the table and out that way. And right. You can just move them up and down so, so i think you it's know it's kind of like kind of like you've seen those light like just like yeah. lamps i guess yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like kind of what you have you know right what, we what got like the, exactly like, we yeah. got like the scissor the scissor yeah. arms with the springs in them they're and they're That's okay got. yeah okay yeah. good good to know That's we're not far we off the mark there you go <laughs> yeah. uh, on like a pittance of a budget <laughs> <laughs> so miles in buckhorn would you what's the what's the hidden gem in buckhorn that nobody knows about um well i don't know man um it used to be like snappers crossing like that little bridge with the river with the yeah. river right yeah. until People those started going tubing there right and that guy wrecked it that so summer not hidden anymore um but like i grew up like right near sandy beach so oh I was yeah always going hey i would Gary, agree with that can you call him up there get out of here sorry about that no no worries at oh. one time i would have said that sandy lake is the is the hidden gem but I, not anymore i feel like everybody goes there they're like oh yeah. we're going to buckhorn to the beach and that's where they're headed right yeah yeah oh man i used to do crazy stuff down at the beach like I remember I was like 13 or 14 and I I was going to like bum a cigarette off somebody down there just some <laughs> stranger. Hey man, got to <laughs> smoke. But I so they're like ride your bike in the water and I was like okay, done. <laughs> Boy, you really wanted that cigarette. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh man. You know, you're trying to be cool. It's not very cool, but yeah. Well, did you ever okay. uh, ride your bike off the the big dock in Fenland before they ripped it out? No, but I would have rode your bike if you'd let me. Right, right. <laughs> I wasn't going to sacrifice my own bike. Are you kidding me? My parents would have killed me. Oh, there's so many kids yeah. that did that. And then it's like they're hauling it out. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. man, I was not that good a swimmer. I'd be like, fuck, I drowned. <laughs> it wasn't that. I mean, I'm tall, too, so it wasn't that deep. Like, I could I could tippy-toe and kind of get my lips above the water, but. <sighs> That's when I got nervous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, no, I, I, uh, I definitely saw, saw that then. I have buddies that would you we would go and like jump off the locks and buckhorn and stuff 
um, in the summertime, like not with our bikes, just, you know, just jump. jump yeah. Out. Yeah. It was pretty dangerous too. I was going to say, <laughs> I mean, you think of it and it wouldn't have been what it was today. But yeah, it's well. I knew guys that used to go to summer school in Peterborough, and they jump in at the at the locks, and there was enough of a current that it would shoot you out like a hundred yards down that river there along. Uh, was that before or after it dragged you under and rolled you a few times? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, and it's like, oh, you should come. I'm like, no, no, not yeah. a chance. So in Buckhorn, there, I don't think there's any like current or anything at the bottom, but it goes into Lower Buckhorn. Yeah, because when the locks were off for the night, it's just it's just stagnant. Like, right, it doesn't move or anything. So, so yeah. you you were jump you were jumping on the yeah, high I mean, side. Like, with the, with, the, yeah, the, the yeah high I side. got you, I got you. I'm thinking yeah. you're jumping yeah. on the low side where they're like it's dragging you down into those rocks. No, 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 that's like the dam part. Right. No, but hey, if anybody's listening to this and they want to impress a girl, <laughs> and they want to take them on like a little date. Should take them to take them in a canoe over the heart on Sandy Lake, and have like a little bottle of wine there. Oh you, right, you've heard of it, the heart, right? I have not. So this is like, all, no man. Oh man, there's a there's a whole heart that was made by like the indigenous people out of rocks at the south end of Sto- or, uh, Sandy Lake, and that's below the yeah. surface, right? can google it right now yeah and and depending on like because sandy lake is like a turquoise kind of color yeah yeah right so like you can really see the heart some days like it's pretty pretty neat that's really cool Man, you're such a player miles <laughs> nice <laughs> bottle of wine that, but i'm sure oh I'm sure you've never never ever right but i know about it know about it <laughs> if uh, your if your girlfriend was to come on right now would she know about that no, <laughs> that's that's young Miles. Uh, game. Oh, okay, that's not okay. old Miles. Game. I, I could, I I would take her there if she wanted. If we had a canoe, sure, it'd be fun. They rent them, you know. You and the dogs. Oh, no one would tip the canoe at all, right? No. Ugh. Man, I used to, I used to love swimming in Sandy Lake when I was a kid. Man, it was the best. It was the best. No weeds. Right. It's just perfect. that it's that perfect lake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, okay. so. Favorite place to eat in Buckhorn, old or new. So if it's gone, but it was the the shit versus oh, what's left two, there. Two places, two places, uh, Pizza Loro and Cody Inn. Well, we've heard those before. Yep. You've actually uh, picked up from. We're big fans of the Cody Inn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, Cody Inn's Chinese food, top, top notch, top notch. And as I say, right, being a Fenland kid, I would have told you, like, right, you just, we only had two Chinese restaurants, and I was a Sung Ming guy. And And I was a Lungs guy. And that was just where you went. And then for years, we drove back to Fenland to get Chinese food, right? We never went to poor poor Bob Cajun. uh, Have you been there now? You've been there since. Once, because. You couldn't get. Something else came up. So it's okay. Yeah. I don't like the oil they use. That's fair. Because I think Cody, and then right at some point we started going to the Cody Inn, and it's, it's now pretty much the elder household choice. It's of, the de facto default. I, like default, they, they close for the winter, right? So then you've got to kind yeah. of fall back to something else. Or don't eat Chinese for yeah, the winter. Yeah. <laughs> well, there, it's just, it's the best, man. It's fresh. It, it tastes good. I don't know. It's just always been that good. So I love Cody Inn and Buckhorn for sure. It's funny, too, because you can go there and be like, you get the, you know the meal for five with a couple plus pluses, and all of a sudden you're two hundred and fifty bucks, and you're yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> How and did you're I like, get here? Combination dinner for one, man. Yeah, uh, we never yeah. eat like that. Yeah, <laughs> you've no. you've seen me waddling around. I, I never <laughs> eat like that. <laughs> uh, well, I haven't been there in a while. Oh. Though. I haven't been out to Buckhorn really that much since the pandemic oh, like maybe a handful of times i so. think that's everything with it right the pandemic it's like man you just don't get uh, we've been once there and they've got sort of the setup where they put a table in the hallway before the back dining room and that's where you're getting so you walk in down the hallway and then you do your payment and your pickup just sort of they've set a table kind of block in the way yeah, but, yeah. So, which is good and i'm always you know what and you know support local support you know you know, people that live in your community that are trying to, to make this work and they've got a decent setup and 
and um, they're trying to to stay afloat and uh, not even knowing what their financial situation is, but we know there's lots of other places that haven't been so lucky. So if you've got a favorite restaurant, man, go there, try to get there more than once a year and, you know, support local. Well, I mean, just here in Bob Cajun alone, we've seen what three closures uh, this spring. Yeah, you three. Think, well, right? one from, one from fire, so that, I mean you can't really include that one. Well, they but, tried, right? And then they moved and they, to the yes, chip they truck. did. They went to a trailer model, or a, a, I guess like a, essentially a giant catering trailer, yeah. which wasn't cutting it for them. And then we lost. Yeah. Um, we just lost the one of the Italian restaurants. Did it sell though? I don't know if the building sold or if they just weren't. I feel like they retired and somebody else is moving in. That may be, in fact, which might be a good the thing. Third one. <laughs> we had their pizza once and i i actually would say that for a uh if you want a an upscaled uh hoity-toity pizza it's okay it's pretty good not I, my regular jam i always laugh <laughs> I, yeah i think i know the restaurant you're talking about yeah yeah, yeah. I know the restaurants you're talking about and what our, our radio station has done we've done a thing called donate a dish nice and, right um, so you can go to the website and uh, you can just donate money. And yeah. Every six hundred dollars we get goes to a a restaurant. It's that's part of it. Right. And um, they make forty frozen meals, and then that goes to Court of Food Share. And then oh, that's to, fantastic! You know, that's fantastic. Struggling with food insecurity, and that's happening. Also, um, it's going to be happening in the Lindsay area, Bob Cajun, I guess, Court Lakes. I think it started uh, Bob FM. So if you go to the Bob website. It's starting now, so yeah, that's it's close. good. It's really good. Yeah, now we've raised like thirty-five grand. Yeah. yeah. Oh that's, wow, that's close to home with us. That uh, was the uh, place that gave Michelle a break. Uh, that's right. Yeah. When she was coming back from uh, motherhood, <laughs> yeah, and trying to get back into the uh, the job thing, um, Kawartha Food Chair uh, gave her a job. So that was sort of where she got her feet back down on the ground before she uh, moved over to BDO. So. Big shout out to shout out to them and uh, Heather Kirby is the coordinator here in uh, out of the Lindsay one and she does fantastic work and she is always hustling for sure. Yeah, yo BDO Financial is great too, man. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, so she, Michelle uh, works at the uh, the Lindsay branch, so they're yeah, yeah they've been really good to them and uh, for being a big company. Um, the partners are still kind of local. So, I mean, you know, your accountants are the people that live in your community. And I'm sure it's very similar to that in Peterborough as well. And um, right. as a company, they've been very generous uh, in keep, <laughs> keeping her employed and making sure yeah, I have yeah. a roof over my head. Right. Uh, I've said that along anyone that's uh, still working and has the ability to go to work and that their employers are giving them hours, you know, yeah. kudos to those people because it's not an easy time um for any kind of business well right. i would, would well, you... i was just gonna say yeah i totally agree man it's just like everything is shit right yeah. <laughs> yeah so have you have you guys found like as a radio and you know you're making your money on ad revenue are you still finding it stayed the same or is the ad department really needing to hustle um our sales are all you know, working from home, but they're doing, they're doing great work for sure. You know, they're, people are still buying, people are still buying things, you know, they're just doing it a different way. So yeah, it's still working out well, but um, yeah, let's not talk about that. (laughs) No no worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally get it. I mean, right. I wake up to my boss's voice all the time on the radio. So it's like, uh, yeah, yeah. So I want to know more about this shop. Uh, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's cool. Uh, I, I love retro stuff. Do you yeah. sell retro video games in there? So when it comes to retro stuff, uh, a lot of it is it really hinges on what people are bringing in, right? So like, because I'm virtually a one man show, I don't I don't have the opportunity to get out and hunt for stuff as much as I would like to. So on any given day, you know, I may have some retro video game stuff laying around. Like for right now, I have a small selection of N64 games and, and Game Boy games. And it, right now, the I guess the cream of the crop is I have a uh, an unplayed, uh, as in like never had been plugged in. I have an original NES uh, action pack that was never played. So that's kind of the cream of the crop right now. Wow. How much does that yeah. go for? So, I mean, it, when I first got it, uh, you know, the the going, 
it was a very negotiable uh, thousand that I had put on that. But I mean, in the last in the last twelve months, I've seen a few of them, you know, go online in the you know seven to eight hundred range for similar. I will partake actually uh, seven to eight hundred range. So that's kind of where I am right now. But something like that where. Uh, it is a big ticket item, uh, and that's that's one of the the virtues of being an independent store is that I have the ability to to make uh, make deals sort of on the spot, uh, whereas right. a, a corporate store can't really do that as much. So um, a right. lot of a lot of the stuff, especially the used stuff, um, it can be flexible. So yeah, mm-hmm. look yeah, at yeah. your missing miles. If you could have been here in public, <laughs> we're just what is that? that is from our Bob Cajun's local brewery, uh, Old Dog. Old Dog, and this is Honey Hound out of their cute little mini uh, growler, thirty-two ounce there. Is the, that beer? Or? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're big beer drinkers here. The joke was so uh, Scott had brought in so when Old Dog they finally got their doors open. They've been sort of they they I don't know if you've been to Bob Cajun lately, but they had a big banner on their building that said "Coming soon ish," and that banner is hung on the building for what uh, over a year. Long time. So they're right. finally right at the locks there. No, so they're right on King Street across the street from uh, Subway. So the okay. old the old post office, Bob Cajun's uh, brewery is supposed to be doing something with that, but I don't yeah. know where they're sitting with that project either, right? Because right, they, okay. they did the uh, the innovation lab there on the parkway first. So that's, you know, Peterborough's got a bigger grab than we do of Bob Cajun Brewery. What do you think? What is this? This is an IPA? The, uh, Honeyhound. I would imagine it's, I'd have to look. I suspect it's an IPA. A little hoppy? It is. But that's okay. So you you had brought in uh, cans from there, and it was a uh, Yellow Lab, and I could not help but make the joke that the the beer called Yellow Lab was in a bright yellow can, and I'm like, is this where all the moosehead jokes come out now? Because all the beers are are now instead of moose piss, it's now dog piss. <laughs> it was it was it definitely tasted better than that. This is unique. Yeah, I'll this has got there. something else going on uh, on the back end. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what it is. I, I don't know, like, you know, but there's tons of microbreweries and, yeah, and micro beers now and stuff. But like I still I still like to get down on like a, a friggin' old E, a forty of old E, man, a couple of those bad boys. <laughs> like you're still pretty good. Yeah, it, well, right. It's 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 super interesting. We've talked about that. We've actually done a couple episodes where we've sat down with four beers and picked yeah. picked out a a champion for the evening. But yeah, there's so much um out there right and it's like and i mean even you think um distilleries right there's blacks uh distillery down in east city they're doing cool things and but um i think there's a real diverse palette of people right especially now that the pandemic happened and i mean everybody's doing at-home delivery and uh you can pretty much reach out and get whatever you want now through the internet but uh did you uh, like last summer? I don't know if you drink coolers, but did you ever get any of those sandbaggers? I've had a sandbagger before, yeah. right? And I mean, I, yeah. somebody told me they're actually getting into the liquor store this year. But I mean, there's a guy that couldn't get into the <laughs> LCBO last year, and I think he did just fine. Do we do we talk yeah. about the sandbagger story that came out of uh, out of town here? No, because I think that guy's a piece of shit. Uh, don't give him any airtime. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, okay. Suffice to say that another uh, proprietor in town cla- laid claim to the invention of the sandbagger, but said that because of his own inability to market it, he was robbed. <laughs> oh, okay. All I have to say is a big sure. fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure, you invented it. Uh, but uh, see the proof. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. I used to drink that. Me too. Uh, oh, man. I, I don't. Hate it when people just lie, like, randomly about stuff you know what i mean it's like what i I, uh you know i drank uh 48 beers uh in 12 hours and uh you know the the ninja turtles showed up and uh, (laughs) like all night and there was like a million girls and like i slept with all of them it was awesome yeah and then there's somebody there that'd be like I drank 50 beers. Uh, oh, yeah, the yeah. one uppers. Yeah, yeah. The one uppers. Yeah, I, I had uh, 51. I've yeah. worked with guys like that, yeah. man. I've worked with guys like that. They were like, yeah, I, you know, I'd be like, you'd be dead if you did any of that. Yeah, stuff. yeah. 
Well, maybe not back in the day when but I was a fucking really. Machine. When you when you look at the sandbagger thing specifically, and you and I have had this conversation, yeah. Scott, where it's like it's a combination of what uh, soda water, lime, and uh, vodka, and vodka. So I mean, there are only so many ways that you can combine those ingredients. So you can't tell me that you invented those. Fuck off! <laughs> like, there's only so many yeah. ways you can put yeah. it together. Yeah, and as as I right. say, like right, every golf course has been serving that drink. Yeah, and the the guy I forget he's out. Uh, is he Millbrook Way or Cabin Way? He's he's got a local connection. I think he's brewing it or distilling it out of Toronto. But there's a local connection closer to Peterborough. But mm-hmm. I mean, there there's a there's a guy that dropped a you know half a million dollars to figure out his yep, idea, market it, it and bring it to market, and did well. So you know what? Kudos to you, absolutely, and having an awesome summertime drink. When we all needed yeah. one last summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, yeah, right? I, I I liked it when I had it, for sure. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, I, I'm good, because, right, I got a brother-in-law that likes it, and you walk into his garage, and there's always, like, five cases staring back at you, and you're like, ah, Stephen won't mind if I take a couple. You know, yeah, I, yeah, I, I look sure. at it this way. You think the guy... You know, we we kind of hold the Caesar as a as a big it's a proud Canadian moment. The Caesar, it's a uniquely Canadian thing. Do you think the guy who invented the Bloody Mary is looking at the Canadian guy going, "Fuck you"? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, Just because you did it with clamato. You added some clam juice, you Ooh. dumb idiot. <laughs> hey man, it's just like on The Simpsons with the flaming the flaming, flaming Moe. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it's it was the flaming Homer, but Mo took credit for it. Right. Exactly. The flaming Mo. I invented it. My name is Mo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> See there, I I believe in the myth because I I called it a flaming mo the right flaming off the mo, hop, yeah, right? Yeah. I I believe yeah. that bullshit guy. Oh, uh, that's funny. But uh, yeah. so Miles, you got anything else on the go, or you just right? You're just kind of going to work. You got through a move. Yeah, man. I just I'm just going to work and coming home and eating lunch, having a nap, working out. You got like some workout stuff in the basement. I saw you and... make a little post and that you've got yeah. uh, a little bench there. Yeah. Did yeah, you get a head? So... You got a heavy bag down there? No, I would. I would like to get one though for sure. Right. Right. Yeah. Keep those hands nimble, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You never know when you're gonna have to use these babies oh I mean, right it's funny i watched something the other day and i and the guy's like i really came to the conclusion i couldn't defend myself and i'm that guy i'm like right yeah i know you're supposed to, right hands up but i'd be like and then it would start and they would come down here and i'd be like <laughs> or i'd hold them out i'd hold them out too far and then they'd like, just you'd be old school boxer. yeah they'd hit my hand and my hand would knuck- hit my old face school knuckle boxer. i'd be like but yeah i mean <laughs> it is such a school uh a skill or an old school skill that you could actually like be a scrapper. And yeah. I can't remember. I'm not, I, I'm not a fighter, man. I, I, no, I, I me neither. I never get into situations where I'm going to get into a fight. Like I got, I did get sucker punched like three years ago, pretty bad, but that Ouch. was like, be, before that it was like many years. I was going to say, it's so, a good reminder, right? To remind yourself that you don't like getting punched in the face. <laughs> oh my God, man. It was awful. Right. Like, it was and, a bad one. Yeah. But some guys love it. It's like they're yeah, it's so it's like do. their light switch. They thrive on it, yeah. and it's like that punch in the face, yeah. and then they're like, "Oh, it's on!" And then they turn off the light switch, and then they're yeah. like, 20 minutes later, they're like, "Did I kill that guy?" I can't fathom that. Yeah, that's what we call going to it's, black. Yeah, yeah, going to black, where yeah, you just you have no cool, man. <laughs> it's cool to just be chill. Yeah, I, I would much rather just talk it out, have a laugh, and kind of walk away. Um. Man, I've been punched in the face once me in, too. High, in high school. And yeah, I, me too. I did not like that. My, no. cl- my jaw clicked for like a week. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. Yeah. But. Uh, oh, man. No, I got I got punched. Like, I didn't even know the guy. He was just walking by. Suckered me, like, right here. And, like, like screwed me up. Like, I, w- I went down and my head went through the, the door, the window of the door. Ow. And, like, broke it. Like, it was crazy, man. And so I went to the hospital the next day and I was like, they x-rayed my face and they're like, yeah, you have a concussion. You're all screwed up. Like had some damage in there. Like it was, it was nuts. It doesn't take much. Right. Especially, right. Especially when you don't know how to, I was, I was pretty drunk and like, (laughs) I don't remember, I don't know who the guy was. I don't remember saying anything to him. I just remember the impact and like, that was it, man. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not. No no surprise (laughs) that most of the uh... punching bag. Yeah. It's like Mel Gibney, Mel Gibney sucks. 
<laughs> no, no surprise. I mean, no. And I don't care. If, I don't care if people think I suck. I'm sure tons of people think. Well, I this suck. is not not a this isn't this isn't a statement about you as a person. But no surprise that you know the fight story is associated with boozing. Do you know what I mean? And it just it speaks to just I'm not at that point in my life anymore where that's even a well, an entertainable thought. I mean, man, we don't even go out to drink. No, we <laughs> we don't have the money to do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, drinking at home is much better. Right? It's simple. Listen it's con- to the music you want. Yeah, it's like, controlled. You eat the food you want. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't have to worry about anybody, right? You're not standing in somebody else's piss in the bathroom, right? Oh, Just, no. Yeah. None of that stuff. Uh, Tipping the guy to yeah. give me a paper towel? Like, what? Right. No. I, so, <laughs> funny story. So, I'd shortly been hired at Mark's, turned 30, yeah. and they took me out to uh, the Sin Bin for my 30th birthday. Okay. And Is I, that the actual name of the place? Uh, it was Sin City. Sin City. Oh, the Sin, Sin, City. Sin Bin. And okay, I, I got it. I had not been out probably in 25 years. Oh, boy. And, right, I was dancing. I was, I mean, right, somebody introduced me to um, Polar Bears, the shot. Okay. Which oh, yeah. Those I, are good. Oh, oh, I was drinking them. I'm like, I don't want it as a shot. I want it as a drink. <laughs> just oh. make it as a drink and drink. Just make those. up six or seven of those and put it in a big glass. <laughs> exactly. And it was like, I mean, I has, I mean, this is again some of the fondest memories I have with staff members because again, like right, working in retail, you end up working with kids, college kids. Yeah, there's some diversity. And there I for remember sure. my first Jaeger bomb at the. Uh, oh no! Not the garage. Um, Trashateria? The Trashateria. And I'm like, what was that delicious nectar? And they're like, oh, that's a Jaeger bomb. And I'm like, what's yeah. in it? And they're like, yeah. Red Bull and Jaegermeister. Jaegermeister. Yeah. And I'm like, what's Red Bull? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I was slightly addicted to Red Bull for I like I can tell a you a Red Bull years. story. Oh. So before Red Bull beca- uh, came to North America, it was, in, uh, it was already marketed in Europe. Um, but the taurine content in the European Red Bull was a lot different than what's in North American just because of the difference in um, health regulations. So I'm a 20-something young young soldier, and uh, I go to Bosnia for six months. And over the course of the, the tour, you get some R&R days. And a lot, of, a lot of the guys on their R&R, they would hop on a train because you're in, you're in that part of Europe where you, you have access to several countries within just a few hours of, of train travel. Right. And so guys would be going up to like Budapest and uh, we would end up seeing them uh, worked as a medical technician. So we would see these guys come back from their leave. And I'm not kidding. When we had guys coming in and they're like, Doc, Doc, I, I don't understand it, man. Like... I'm sweating, my heart's beating real hard, and it's like, oh, okay, so what what were you doing for the last couple of days? I was on leave. Okay, where'd you go? I went up to, like, Budapest. Great. Did you have a good time? Yeah, yeah. What were you doing? I was just drinking and stuff. Yeah, what were you drinking? Oh, I was drinking Red Bull and vodka. Like, okay, so how many of those did you have? Six. You know, the can says not more than one in 24 hours. Oh, bud. (laughs) Let me tell you, I went to a golf tournament, and three guys on a hot dog drank a case of 24 no that's dangerous oh. it might be why i have yeah, a heart condition now who knows <laughs> yeah but that but was yeah, in that, uh, that was back in 2000 what's that you, you yeah yeah that? yeah yeah i oh, um no, so no, no, no. right before the uh the pandemic i went for a physical and the doctor's like you've got an arrhythmia and i'm like oh news to me and yeah i've got a thickening of the uh right atrical no ventricle right so yeah I, I now it's got a fancy name but uh yeah non-symptomatic never would have known i had it but uh my right. wife often says that uh, um it was the red bull and the energy drinks i wonder if it was that time that uh dave at beast fitness suggested that i take uh oh boy oh gosh what was that combination <laughs> When caffeine got, and what? Uh, yeah, it was caffeine. Yeah, there you go. Um, oh, something else over the counter and uh, some aspirin to make sure you didn't stroke out. I mean, I got skinny on it. <laughs> oh, so what? what yeah, yeah. Caffeine, Sudafed, and uh, it was something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's not yeah, really uh, sound advice, by the way. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I, 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 I worry about my heart all the time too, man. Like I, I take magnesium at bedtime yeah. and stuff, you know, like just to relax everything. Yeah. Well, good for you for being that self-aware and that health conscious, you know, we actually, we were, oh, man, we were talking about my heart, man. I, I, 
really worry about my heart for sure. Being that we're now, Scott and I are 40 somethings, uh, it actually came up because we've both had some pretty complex medical stuff over the last year. And I said, we need to do an episode on men's health. So that just reminds me that we still need to do that. We do need to sit down with that. I mean, right, Miles, you're taking care of yourself pretty regularly. I mean, you you say nah, but you know what? You're doing a big thing. And as as much as you don't want to say that you're an influencer, how many followers you got on... uh, not, not a lot. Listen to him. Not, not a, lot. a lot. More than me. I don't. I really don't. <laughs> Listen, the joke, the joke here. So the, the joke about our show is, you know, for all the listeners out there, all three of you, yeah. if you have more than that, you're doing well. <laughs> but uh, you know what? And you're not afraid to talk about that you're improving yourself, right? Whether it's, you, you know, you just read a book the other week. Um, you've oh, listened. Yeah, I, I struggle with anxiety hard. Like I've had, I've had some real problems with it, especially this year. Like I, I started a mind beacon therapy, like CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. Good for you, man. To stop, to stop my, you know, how, how my thought process goes. Oh, we could have a whole conversation re- about that. But right. You're Rewire willing, it. you're, you're willing to talk about it, which is a huge first step. Cause I mean, so many people just wallow in their own self misery and don't yeah. talk about it. Don't try to self-improve. And it's like, right. And then, you know, you're talking about it with, you know, the general public. But I would assume, right. Your, your girlfriend obviously knows that you're struggling. And, but I mean, your loved ones know. So, I mean, there's some people that don't even know that, you know, you know, your best friend could be having really dark thoughts, but they never talk about it. So you no. can never reach out and say, Hey, right. are you okay? Mm-hmm. But yeah. you no, know what? I, 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 I find that when you do talk about it, um, uh, a lot more people are feeling the same way. A, a ton, a ton. And yeah. especially now, like right? Way more than you'd ever think that people yep. were and, struggling with anxiety or depression. But like this, this book that I'm reading right now, it's, it's on top of like having the, the therapy sessions and stuff like that, this 12 week therapy session thing. But like this new book that I got it's on Amazon, it's called unfuck your brain. Oh, nice. I love the it's, title. It's full. Yeah. It's all full of swearing. It's like, the, the woman who wrote it, she's like a, you know, a psychotherapist, like doctor lady. Yeah, sure. I forget her name right now, but it's very easy to read, man. And it's like, you totally get it. And like, I want I was like, why, why does my brain do this? Like why? And then it's like breaks down what, what the brain does, like the parts of the brain, what they do yeah. and why they do them. Yeah. It, it helps so much just knowing that the language of so. that title. And I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know anything about the book other than what you've told me, but that the language of that title is so important uh, in the discussion of men's health because men have a propensity to not only just bury and, and hide things, but you know that that as you say, you want to know what's wrong with you. We tend to frame it in why am I broken? You know, like you feel mm-hmm. like you're at fault for being broken, and so the in the military we use the term "unfuck yourself" a lot. So when I heard you say yeah. "unfuck your brain," I'm like, that's the perfect title for that book, and it really yeah, speaks yeah. to to men. Uh, particularly even though it's written by a woman that's pretty cool yeah and it's it's very easy it's an easy read man like it's it's not that long of a book no. like you could read it read it a few times you know what i mean really hammer it home and it's it's for anxiety it's for uh depression it's for um you know just triggers in general yeah it's yeah, for yeah. A- anger like if you have anger outbursts. oh well, that might be a good one for me then because <laughs> that's where i'm still struggling so it's it's very good man yeah your mental health is super important man it's super important well you know, too you, that you was can't do shit if you don't have your your brain you know that's right you, yeah so. i feel like that was too like that was one of the big reasons why we kind of met at the gym too because i think that was you know i think that's why people are struggling during the pandemic because your your normal thing of getting out and getting exercise has, so been ta- has been taken away from you but i think that was one of the things too i mean you were making you know, you were on a great schedule there when we were going to beast. I mean, there's not many days you missed. And I mean, I, I I dropped a lot of weight quickly there, but like I've gained some back for sure. Here, here, brother, here, here. Yeah. Which is right. But yeah, man, I, I think exercising like every day, no matter what it is, if you're just going for a walk or something, you got to do it every day. And like, I, like, I love it. Like I, I need it. I get grumpy if I don't, so, that's well, you, well yeah. right you've got a job where you go in and sit in a chair right it's it's a tough job yeah. right you're not getting up and moving and doing a whole lot of stuff as much as i say i work retail 
we're still crushing 1500 steps a day usually yeah on a busy day you're oh, always yeah. you're hustling right but we yeah, yeah. we were talking about that the other day that um it's terrible to say and if it's really the case but the level of stupidity and nastiness from customers that you know you know i'm at work because i have yeah. to be there and um you know i'm doing my best to deal with everything in a difficult situation that you can't come into the store i appreciate you know everything's important and everyone's put their own spin on the pandemic and why you know they're downtrodden and how everything's affecting them i'm like does anyone think how it's affecting the person they're like browbeating because i won't let them return their sweater nope because they only can <laughs> yeah, think yeah. of what's in, you know what's yeah. most important to them but uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what i heard you know what I heard? This one made me laugh, and it was um, the, uh, the anti-maskers and the anti-vaxxers in the States. Um, some of them are starting to mask up now because they're afraid of vaccine shed from people who have been vaccinated. I saw a note so, on somebody's door. What that does that even mean? Scared. That you can't come into the house because you've been vaccinated and a vaccine shed and that your yeah. altered DNA will get into me. What the hell does that yeah, even mean? It'll, it'll make you infertile and stuff like this. So it's... Uh, I know. The, the, inter the internet's been great for many things, man. You know, <laughs> you've been able... It's, it's been good for a lot of information, It's been, it, but it's been... I think it's been even better for misinformation. Well, this is the whole problem, right? And uh, that was the, the day I shouted kudos was you and Mike. Uh, you had some fun with that, and... Uh, we talked about somebody I knew that was a, a full member of the tinfoil hat club. And it's like, yeah, but here's a great story. And I mean, not to begrudge the lady. So if you're essential, you can come into where I work. If you make an appointment, no walk-ups. So that seems fair. So this lady walked up. Oh boy. And she's like, I have a return to make. And I'm like, well, we're not really doing returns not today. You don't. And uh, she's like, well, how, how do I get rid of this? Well, I said, we're really only making appointments for essential. And she's like, well, my husband is essential. He's currently working. I need to return this and get something else. Mm. So it's like, okay, well, I'll make you an appointment. And she's like, well, I drove an hour. And I'm like, mm. okay. From, from the guy that drives 45 minutes every day, an hour means nothing to me. And it's like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fine so i go get the book i'm like you know what i can fit you in get her name get her number for the covid tra uh trace uh Contact tracing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and then i do my covid pre-screener and i'm like oh you'll just have to run back to your vehicle and grab your mask and she's like i'm exempt and i'm like well it really doesn't matter right now because the store is closed so we're asking for mandatory masks and she's like yeah. so i've already done like three exceptions for this lady she looks at me and she goes, this is why I fucking hate you people and walked away. Oh. And I'm like, have a nice day. Yeah. Right. Close the door, <laughs> locked it. I'm like, yeah. everybody looks at me and she's like, they're like, she's not coming in. And I'm nope. like, nope. Has she ever been back? So, uh, those you kind of wonder. Those eh? are the people that say, I'm never going to shop here again. And then they fucking yeah, show up and you're back. like, you fucking promised me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You got my hopes up. That you were never going to come back, and here you fucking are. Get out. Is she Karen? Oh, yeah, right? right. She totally, By definition, yes. 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 I, and the I funny like thing, Karen. I have her first, last name, and phone number. My wife, you know Michelle, she's like, you got her phone number? You want to call her up? No, she's like, you should sign her up for like. Oh, Lord. All the phone things and no give her shit. phone right so, and be like, "Here's my phone number. Call me. Sign her up for the." You're gonna subscribe to everything. And I'm like, "Oh, you're that's so illegal now. You can't do that now." Oh, is it? There you go. There's yeah. the voice of reason. I have to tell my wife that she'll be sad. Even if yeah. it wasn't, is it actually? Is it? There's an ethical question could, there. Could, could they figure that out? If that I gave your phone number to somebody else, signed you up for the Reform Party of Canada. Oh boy. No, don't party do that. War, Political party. parties require like a financial contribution. Oh, maybe they don't. Yeah, you yeah. pay. You do, you don't you? Yeah, you pay like a, you like a, a dues or something. It used to be like 18 bucks and you could join a political... Uh, yeah. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I don't belong to anything. I think, it's, I think it's like 15 bucks now or something is like it? that. Yeah. It's reasonable. Yeah. Because they just want yeah. registered members, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not doing that. No. <laughs> 
No, no. If I want to throw money at something, it's got to actually speak to me. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, well, do you get any, um, do you, do you get any horror movies in there? So we don't do a lot of, we don't do movies per se, oh. even though the store is a, a film and television theme. Um, I see that you do have a poster for Back to the Future back there. Yeah, so those two, the two, the posters are are like ambience for the, the people have asked me how much for the poster, and I, I keep trying to tell people that, listen, if you really really want it, we can make a deal on it, but it's kind of my, it's part of my decor. Right, right, right. <laughs> Not that I wouldn't so, sell yeah, it if know, the if the price was right, I I would, but. So no, no, like retro horror, eighties horror. Stuff. so like just besides the jason toys just the figures yeah so like memorabilia yeah. and other like related stuff not really um not that we mm-hmm. wouldn't be into that if someone brought that kind of stuff to us we just don't yeah. have it he did yeah. west does a cool thing um miles when he he's got like some people that have like outstanding wish lists with him yeah so I mean, he goes to um, like trade shows down in the city when that was a thing. When it was a, when you could, and like right, and then he sort of like yeah. you can like where you might not get to a show, or you may only go to one in Peterborough. West might go to three or four, varying from down into Whitby, out into Belleville. Yeah, and he's got some customers or clients that have left him a wish list of like, so if you see this, can you pick it up? You know, this is what I'll pay. Yeah, and, that, and that's the most important part is, like, I don't have a problem buying stuff for people, but it's, like, you got to know that it's coming at a cost because if I have to lay out for it ahead of time, I have to recoup my cost, so. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. so sure. it's, like, that thing, as much as right now that he doesn't have that dynamic in the store, if, if you were to say, hey, if you see this stuff, these are, yeah. like, mm-hmm. my wish list things, well, yeah. you might never see that. He might have seen it twice last year. I, I yeah. feel like, yeah, like yeah. you've got a few things that are on your list, right? That are like that you're still looking for. Uh, well, I I don't know. Like I, it's like anything with the uh, Freddy. Like I love Freddy so much. Like I got Freddy tattooed on my. Oh, that's awesome! Riding the buckhorn buck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Freddy riding <laughs> the buckhorn the buck. The listeners picked it. <laughs> that's sweet. The listeners picked that tattoo. And that's they got it for free. Uh, Mike's tattoo. Oh, that's good awesome. Good I was gonna say because that sounds like it, you know, like you lost a bet tattoo. <laughs> yeah, no, they just. I, I said whatever they pick, I'll do it. Man. You'll do it. Wow. It so it was cool that they picked that one. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I want to. I, I yeah, I love Freddy stuff, and uh, I like Jason stuff too. I'm getting a Jason shirt made right now. <laughs> So, so one of the um one of the companies that we buy merchandise from periodically they do some some prop stuff. So we've had before we've had prop replica uh, Jason hockey masks and we've had uh, the Freddy glove. Oh yeah. I mean it's certainly not as high fidelity as some of the the actual prop makers who are out there, but for a commercially made product they're they're pretty good. So yeah. they they typically rerun that stuff, you know, not yearly, but sometimes every other year they'll do runs of them. So but we're always we're always looking and we're always buying and one of the other things we do is we uh we offer consignment from the public because sometimes people have big collections at home that they don't know what to do with and you know we don't necessarily have the overhead to outrightly buy them but if you're not in a hurry to you know sell it we can sell it on your behalf and take a commission on it so yeah yeah no, that's cool man not yeah, that I wanted to plug what I do but if I could get a Freddy glove one day, that'd be yeah. amazing. Yeah, so I'll I'll keep an eye. Those are the things that when they rerun them, it's a no brainer. We're buying them, so like, we'll well, yeah. Always... This is the cool thing about like as I say, right? This 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 podcast has been really eclectic, and as I say, right, is as much as you should listen. Wes has got actually he runs a we do a pop culture show. Yeah, In fact, fan, yeah. fandom power. So this is oh, our cool. uh, our pop and, culture show, right? The, nice. they, Right, talk a lot about now. Again, we haven't delved. Wes hasn't delved into the the horror end of things. No, but I mean, if we had a, a an Andy appropriate be, guest, yeah, yeah, Andy be into that too. But right, I mean, that's you know, we're trying to be everything because we don't want to really. You don't want to shoot down super narrow. Uh, like we we've been happy to like with the growth since we opened or started recording in September October. Uh, October, yeah, October. We had a bit of a hitch with some returns, yeah, uh, before we got our gear. And then, in. um, you know, we just hit um just under fifteen hundred yeah, fourteen um, and change downloads across the platform. Oh, so this was nice. the nice thing is um 
we're just posting everything under like Sawcast Productions. So that was sort of, we said, well, if we're doing anything, why would we not put it all under one umbrella? So everything gets uploaded under Sawcast. So, you, yep. you know, it, it's giving us a little bit of a wider reach. Um, hope- it's all part of the master plan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's always, as I say, right. It's like, right. You're a pretty eclectic guy. So, I mean, like, right. As much as we can have a conversation here about just general nothingness, but right. You could drill down like you've got right. You like VHS. You like horror. You, you, right, you're a movie guy. You're, you know, you're. There's so much you can sit down. And as they say, if you ever have a topic you want to talk about, man, we've got a platform for you to. <laughs> My God, do we ever the yeah. chat on too, right? And I mean, that was. I mean, you did a great job on um, our mutual friend Dave, right? He got one episode up before his life got uh, busy, and I mean, that was a funny. And that was just talking about Peterborough and just the yeah. general fuckiness of of downtown yeah yeah, yeah. and that yeah, was i mean right. i laughed that was good that was like but yeah, i mean yeah, that, was, that was crazy it, it's yeah, specific yeah, right yeah. you got to know peterborough but then it's like no yeah. you know what that's any downtown that's that's yeah. kingston that's that's oh, oshawa yeah. that's Home, hometown anywhere has all of these like stories that yeah. have this fabric of commonality right but that yeah, was even totally. uh the day <laughs> i also Shout out to you guys. The uh, the days you guys record the sidewalk in front of the studio. <laughs> I love that. Whether it's the ducks over at the park or the guys smoking hash out of the bar. <laughs> I love that. It'd be uh, like, yeah. and you're like, on Instagram. Yeah, 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 I am yeah. like, oh, yeah. fuck, that's gold. That's yeah. gold. Yeah. It's like. No, man. Yeah, there's there's always something happening around the radio station. That's for sure. Yeah, you're just, you're oh, yeah. you're one block out of like the bad place, but you're still close enough. The that bad you, place. That you get what? stuff. When the when the weather gets warm, man, you never know what you're gonna find back there. You know, like so it's it's funny. So I, I look forward to it. <laughs> it makes it- your day, right? It's worth getting up that early. Sometimes, yeah. It's well, hard, man. like I'm dead right now. I was gonna say, are we cutting into your nap? Yeah, I was gonna time? say, did you you work this morning? Yeah, yeah. Oh boy, yeah, it's nap time for sure. Okay, all right. Well, we won't keep you up much longer. Um, we've we've got a little bit of tradition here, um, Miles. Is there anything you want to promote or plug before we let you go? Um, not really. Just this show, maybe that this podcast. Nice. Oh, thanks very much. Uh, we appreciate nice. that. Nice. We'll send you the link, and uh, if you okay. certainly you want to share it, uh, that would be fantastic. Uh, do you do you know Randy? Um. He uh Hemi Hockey at uh out of the Lindsay Arena. You ever met him? Uh oh, oh. Hein- not Heinemann. Yeah, Heinemann. Heinemann. Randy Heinemann. So he's sort of like Kawartha Lakes. That's about the the most uh connected guy yeah. <laughs> that we've had on the show. Yeah. And it was funny because right, we actually it, it's it's funny. We saw a little uptick in um traffic that week because when his again, episode right, aired, yeah. He's he's sharpening like seven community skates as oh, it was a cool it was cool and he's like oh he threw it up on his uh social media so we'll send you the link for sure we'll tag okay. you but yeah if you sure. want to post it that's always awesome we love that and uh heaven forbid we get some uh mike and miles listeners uh listening to what we're doing yeah really yeah no yeah i can post it man no oh, we um, appreciate that i don't think i said anything too out of line so <laughs> yeah <laughs> right it works. nothing to get you in trouble at work yeah yeah <laughs> but uh yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, and uh, as always, I just want to say I still think you should be doing the birthday reads um, on air. I miss that. I do. I do some. Yeah, well, right, uh, the, you get the odd shout out. I think I got a shout out one year, and then you gave a shout out to uh, Taylor there the other day. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So right, it's yeah, like if, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is always appreciated. I mean, it's always funny, right? It's like, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's 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 nice to hear, and it's nice to keep still keep it uh, local for sure. Yeah, yeah, no, people love the birthday line, man. They love it. Oh, didn't they you tell crazy, me they go crazy for it? You told me last year they were trying to get rid of it. Um, th- th- I don't know if they're. It's a sponsored event, so they want something there, right? So, and it's been there forever, and people love it, man. Like 
kids really love it you know like if you're oh you hear your name oh to hear your name on the radio radio, you go crazy yeah yeah yeah. it's nice that way for sure man i get excited if i get a request on the air (laughs) (laughs) you know what i mean oh uh, what, man, you I'm your friend. Call? I I'm your friend. I see you. Everything that you post on Facebook shows up. I'm like, you love talking. <laughs> Listen, yeah. loving talking does not mean that it's not intimidating at times. Ah, you do good. You do good. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, Miles, thank you so much for coming on and uh, fitting this into your day. Um, no problem, man. Thanks for having me. No, no worries. And uh, I'll send you some pictures of. Uh, some toys. Some oh, sorry, adult collectibles. Adult collectibles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not sex so toys. You, right. Yeah. So you can have a look. Cool. All right. Cheers, man. All right. Well, this All has right, been one of the one of the most eclectic episodes of hanging at the barbershop. Ah. I hope you guys uh, stuck it out with us, and uh, hopefully we can get some more of these in. And uh, you know, if you want to be a guest on the show, you know how to how to, uh, how to hit us up. Awesome. All right, guys. Thanks very much, Miles. We'll let you go. Thank you. All right. Cheers. Have a good one, sir. See ya. All right. Bye now. Thanks. Bye. Hey, thanks for hanging with us at the barbershop. You can find us on all your favorite podcasting platforms. Please like and share us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter to stay up to date on all of our shenanigans. Hanging at the barbershop is a Sawcast production.